Chapter 14. Travis kept thinking what Velveeta had said about lying all the time. Did she really lie all the time? If she did, how was he supposed to know what to believe? Maybe he was stupid for believing any of it. The next day at lunch, she pushed the thick book she'd been reading into the middle of the table. Do you know what this book is about? The picture on the cover was a dark curvy line of dominoes with a finger ready to push the first one over. You said it's about death. Yeah, but it's also about something else too. There's this girl in it and she can't read. She's super smart, but she never learned. And then in the book, she learns how. A hot fire lit up under Travis's face. It's so great, said Velveeta, the way she learns. Not with baby books, but with a book about digging graves. You want my cookie, he asked. If only Bradley would show up. Where was he anyway? You know that fox book you carry around, she asked. Are you circling words in there? I was just wondering because the girl in here kind of reminds me of you and that's what she's doing so i wondered if that's what you're doing besides mcqueen is the one who made me start reading this book he told you travis narrowed his eyes at mcqueen over at the teacher's table no yelped Velveeta. he didn't say anything he's a batinsky not a blabbermouth i figured it out myself and i swear i won't tell anyone I think it's super cool, just like Liesl in the book. And she's got this friend named Rudy, and they steal stuff together. Maybe we can go steal stuff, some stuff too. What do you want to steal? So that is an allusion to a book. Travis was sweating so hard it ran down his sides. He bit his lips so his teeth wouldn't chatter. Travis, really, it's okay, Velveeta said. If it's none of my business, and if you want me to shut up, just knock on the table three times. If you don't want me to shut up, but you still want me to eat your cookie, knock twice. If you want to give me an extra $20 today, if I kiss you in front of everybody, knock once. If you... Travis held up his hand. That's not a knock, said Velveeta. Travis shook his head. I understand the sign language of the Travatoni tribe. I will stop talking. I gotta go. He picked up his tray. The bell didn't ring yet, she called after him. He hid out in the library for the rest of the lunch period, taking deep breaths to keep from freaking out. She knew there, were no, there was no way to make her not know because now she knew. She said she wouldn't tell anyone, but what if that was a lie? All afternoon, he kept the fox with him. He circled words into the second chapter and went over his list of five words again and again, writing them on his palm with his finger, tracing them in deep. Velveeta came by his locker after school. Can I see the book? No, said Travis. Please? Travis put the book in his backpack, pulled on his jacket, and slammed his locker. Don't be mad, Velveeta followed him. I won't tell anyone, I swear, and I really do think it's cool. Yeah, but you lie all the time, remember? Velveeta stopped. When Travis got to the door, he turned and leaned on it as he pushed his way out. She was still standing where he'd left her, in the middle of the hall, kids streaming around her like she was an island. Their eyes met and she turned away, limping almost. Travis pushed out the door. The air was dense and sullen, the sky a gray muddle like Travis's stomach. He'd hurt her, not a bloody nose or a concussion, but something just as bad. He turned down the alley and peeked in the park. Nobody there. Travis dropped his backpack and took McQueen's scrap of paper out of his pocket. He leaned against the center pole of the merry-go-round. Summer, branches, young, night, hunt. He traced them into his palm. Hey, Travis. He shoved the paper in his pocket. What are you doing? Bradley tossed down his book bag and sat on the merry-go-round. Nothing. <laughs> I want to ask your advice about Velveeta. She got me all wrong at lunch yesterday. How do I tell her that? Again, Travis saw Velveeta standing alone in the hall. Even her scarf was drooping. I don't know, just tell her. Because the thing is, I do like her. I like her a lot. You know, I'm not just sitting by you because my games got yanked, right? Because I'm not. And I don't just like Velveeta. I like you too. You're cool, but you're not mean. Um, I'm not cool, Travis said. Yes, you are. Even Chad Cormick thinks you're cool. He does? Yep, he said so. He said that Robert's kid is one coolio mulio. And Reed said maybe you're the master chief on a time regression mission. The master who? The master chief. 
he kicked butt way back before he got Cortana. And Lornar, I don't know what that is, armor. Hey, you know that picnic table by the bridge? Are there some guys there every afternoon? Sometimes, said Travis. Why? No reason. Bradley kicked the dirt, so the merry-go-round started to roll. So you think I should just tell Valvita she got it wrong? Or should I not sit by you anymore? I think you should do what you want. Travis grabbed his backpack as he stood. I gotta go. See you tomorrow, said Bradley. Travis walked slowly through town. So Valvita got Bradley all wrong, and he got Valvita wrong. The picnic table guys hooted and whistled when he walked across the bridge. Travis glanced over at them. Maybe everybody got everybody wrong. He walked into the house with no rascal and opened the refrigerator. Sitting on the top shelf, smack in the center, was a 12 pack of cans and they weren't Coke. Hmm. His stomach landed somewhere close to his knees. So much for that. He took the Fox book out on the back stoop. A moody wind thrashed through the yard. He had just finished easing the circles around the five words on the first two pages when Grandpa slammed the front door. You home? Out here, said Travis. How's things? Grandpa stepped onto the porch. He cracked open a can and tried to light up. The wind blew out the flame and he had to set the can down and use both hands, making a windshield. Learn anything new today? So much for your 30 days, huh? Travis pointed at the can. Oh, duels, non-alcoholic beer, said Grandpa. See, it says right here. He put his finger under the tiny print words. Anyway, since when do you care? He took a deep drag out of his cigarette. It's not easy, you know, he said, the smoke streaming out with his words. This sobriety thing, I could use a little support. What's so hard about it? Just don't drink the stuff. Grandpa slammed the can on the concrete step and liquid fizzed up and over. Alcoholic or not, it sure smelled like beer. That easy, huh? Is that what you think? Grandpa poked him in the shoulder and Travis moved away. Grandpa reached over and poked again, like he used to do when Travis was little and didn't want to go to school. Don't you go crawl off in a corner and cry, he used to yell. If you're mad, get out here and make some fists. And he'd keep poking tra until Travis slapped his hand away. Then he'd laugh and poke again. The poking went on until Travis made real fists and swung hard. Then Grandpa would put up his palms and get Travis to slug them over and over, hard enough to make solid smacks. After that, he'd sling an arm around Travis's neck, and the three of them, Travis, Grandpa, and Roscoe, would go out to the swamp. That was a long, long time ago. You think you got it so bad, said Grandpa. Boo-hoo, poor Travis. He poked again. Travis clenched his teeth hard. He picked up the book and stepped around Grandpa. I've got homework. He slammed the screen door on his way through, went into his tiny box of a bedroom, and shut the door. He circled words in chapter two until Grandpa went to bed. Then he made himself a piece of cheese toast for dinner. Velveeta on Thursday. I can't believe Travis thought I was lying about thinking it's cool that he'd learn to read. I wouldn't lie about something like that, not ever. So that's his secret, not dying of leukemia. I want us to be friends like Lysel and Rudy in The Book Thief, only now I'm not sure if we get to be any kind of friends at all. He didn't want his secret busted. I should have kept my mouth shut. I still can't believe he thought I was lying, though. Ouch. Later, the Madre came, banging on the door while I was writing. Oh, he jumped away. And just about scared me out of my skin. I didn't let her in, but I went back over to our place with her and bec because she was crying. She said, where did he go now? Hmm. She said, I'd rather spend my time in an empty trailer where an old man died than be with my own flesh and blood. And why am I so mean to her? I hate it when she's like that. It makes me feel so bad. She asked me to stay home from school tomorrow and hang out with her. How did I ever get to school in the first place? Somebody must have made me go to kindergarten the first time, right? Or did I just wake up one morning and say, hey ma, I'm five, guess it's time for me to go to school. I don't remember that. I remember the first time I came to your trailer though, you gave me a cookie. How old was I? I think I was in first grade. I couldn't read yet because I remember you reading to me. 
I also remember when you bought me a toothbrush. And I remember you drilling me on the multiplication tables and spelling words. Good thing you weren't some old perv or something, because it's not like anyone was making sure you weren't. The Madre did call you a perv once. I never told you that, but she did. I hit her in the face and whoa, she yanked my hair and smacked me a good one. Didn't know that, did you? Calvin, do you think you could come back and haunt this place just for a little bit, please?